In this session, we have uh, John Tilly from Zonguru. And here you will learn how to validate ideas, what data points to use, and how to approach niche criteria in different Amazon regions like North America, Europe, Australia, India. You will also get a few more tips uh, from uh, John uh, about uh, how to do your product research. And uh, he will answer your questions, what data to use, and how to look at it. And the uh, sponsors of this uh, broadcast are three companies. It's uh, one of them is Zonguru, is our guest today in this session as well. Zonguru is a all-in-one tool suite for Amazon sellers, and you can use the, this software for any at any stage of your Amazon business. You will find the link below in the description with their special offer. Also, uh, another sponsor is Getida, which is a uh, Amazon FBA audit and reimbursements company for Amazon sellers, and they can help you to get your money back from Amazon. Again, you will find the link below to get their offer of $400 of free reimbursements. And finally, Awesome is the third sponsor. It's a FBA aggregator created by ex-Amazonians, and they can buy your brand. So get in touch with them if you want to sell your business. Let's get ready for a job until the end of the Hey, Hi, and John. I, yeah, together with John, we also have Lisette, which is uh, hosting our YouTube videos here. as well. She works with uh, Amazon Brands. So hi, John. Really happy to have you here today joining us. So for those who don't know you yet, could you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do in the Amazon space? Thanks, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to be singing that uh, Clickbox song for, uh, for the next uh, day or two. It's very catchy. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I'm John Tilly. I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of Zonguru. Uh, we're a business intelligence software tool set for private label Amazon sellers. Uh, we have about 17 different tools. We started in 2016 uh, and we're integrated with uh, Amazon North America, uh, Europe, uh, Australia and India. So uh, if you use any of those marketplaces or you want to look for products or sell products in those marketplaces, you can use Zonguru. Um, I'm also a seller. I started selling back in 2014. Uh, so I have multiple brands as well, uh, and we have a bunch of sellers on our team. That's kind of our thing, uh, for sellers, by sellers. So that's us. And right now I'm sitting uh, north of Los Angeles. I'm based in Los Angeles, and uh, I'm looking at the, the waves because I'm near the beach, and it, it looks pretty good. So, you know, I'm here for this, but hopefully after that I'm going to be over there uh, jumping into the sea. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And uh, if you guys like uh, videos we produce, and also if you enjoy information in the session, don't forget to click below to the like button, subscribe button, whatever you find. So um, you will get notifications of more videos we create. And uh, John, uh, what you will be sharing with us today in your presentation? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about today just to, to share this knowledge. Obviously, I'm, I'm really passionate about starting businesses on Amazon and scaling them. Uh, and today, what I want to focus on is around product research. This is obviously the beginning of the Clickbox Summit. We're going to talk a lot about product research uh, and, and share my knowledge. I mean, I've obviously been looking at products and what kind of products to sell, both in my personal capacity and with Zonguru since 2016. So uh, I know the market, we, we're integrated with all these different marketplaces. So seeing the data, seeing what people are looking for in Amazon, and specifically what kind of products you need to look for in each of these marketplaces to sell, um, and, and explaining the differences between them and how to find that right niche and that right kind of product for each type of marketplace, I think is really critical. So I'm going to share that. Uh, I'm going to share you two different ways of how to find products very quickly um, and, then, uh, and then show you some examples from each of the different marketplaces. So it should be fun. Uh, and hopefully, if you guys have questions, uh, let me know. All right. So while you're preparing your presentation and slides, let's look at uh, what Zonguru can do and how they help Amazon sellers. We are ready for the slides of John. All right, perfect. So stage is yours. All right. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that little uh, summary of Zonguru. I like the, the bear claw. It was great to see. 
Um, okay, so this is the presentation. We're going to run through it, show you examples, uh, dive into some different techniques to finding products. Um, and August, Augustus Lizette, if you have questions, please ask away. Um, so uh, what we're going to cover today is, is Amazon too competitive? That's a question we always get as sellers. Um, and the high, high level answer is obviously not, but it, it, we have actually more options for us outside of just Amazon North America nowadays. But you have to understand how to find products. Are they viable? And can you grow a successful business? We're going to cover that today in the slides. The first thing that I want to just high level say here is launching a product on Amazon. What is the golden ticket? What are we looking for in terms of what to sell? Obviously, it has to have good demand. People need to be searching for that on Amazon already, uh, that type of product category. There needs to be little competition. We want some competition, but not too much, right? Uh, we want great profit margin. That's how we scale an Amazon business. We need to have that leftover net margin to be, able, to be able to invest back into the business and grow it. Low capital investment. All of us want that. It's less risky, obviously, if we can put a little bit of capital in, not too much. And then the potential to grow that business over one to two years to seven to eight figures. That's the golden ticket. That's what we're looking for as a product that we can sell on Amazon. Obviously, differentiation is a critical piece. How do you differentiate and create that moat around your private label brand? Um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the next few slides. So the question we all know too well is, is Amazon.com too competitive? Have I missed the boat? Uh, you know, back in 2016, people were asking that question. They're still asking it even more today. That the answer is no, of course not. Amazon.com, there's amazing opportunities there, but you have to understand how to look for products on Amazon.com. And it's a very different market in terms of size, seasonality, uh, seasonless of it um, uh, compared to some of the more emerging markets uh, that might be easier to get in, but might grow exponentially over time. So I'm going to uh, jump in and show you those differences. This is just a typical example when I say, is it too competitive or you know, capital investment? How has it changed over time? And this is .com, right? Back in 2016, I was looking at uh, gaming chairs, right? Uh, that was a personal pro product that I was looking at. So back then, it was about a $10,000 capital investment to get enough stock to compete at, at the page one velocity of sales. And the potential of that business was around $50,000 a month. So it was a six-figure business back then in 2016. Fast forward seven years. Now, if you go and look at this product on Amazon.com, you probably needed about $150,000 in, in, in capital to buy enough stock to really be able to sell at the velocity of page one. And your potential for that business is $1.5 million a month right? That's a massive change over seven years. That's just seven years that that change has happened. Now, clearly, uh, for me to invest and start this business now in 2021, I need a lot more capital. It's probably too risky for me, too big for me. Um, but, you know, if you find some of those smaller micro niche opportunities, they'll absolutely be there and you can get on them. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more later. Um, so that's the growth that's happened over seven years, right? And the question that I want to get you thinking about when you're looking for products is, Yes, there's opportunities on Amazon.com, but what are some of the other opportunities? And I can tell you right now that, you know, if you could imagine going back to Amazon.com in 2016, would you do it? Would you go and buy those gaming chairs, stay in stock, try and grow with the marketplace and see if you could scale that business to 1.5 million a month? The answer is probably absolutely yes. Uh, and that opportunity is right now available on some of those emerging marketplaces. That kind of level of competition, that beginning of the growth period is where some of the emerging markets uh, outside of Amazon.com are, are, are right now. So Amazon Australia, Amazon India is starting to get there. You know, some of the European countries like uh, like Italy, France, some of these are really becoming viable marketplaces um, and, and the exponential growth is ahead of them, you know. So those kind of opportunities to get in with a little bit of capital and watch it grow to seven, eight figures over the next few years, that's absolutely available, um, you know, on, on some of the emerging markets. And of course, on .com it is, but you have to be very more, much more specific when you look at it. So just a question, a theme for this presentation when you're going through, I just want you to think about why not, you know, why not look at other marketplaces? Why not, you know, uh, look at some niches? Why not jump in and start sitting on Amazon? Why not invest now for a, a massive exponential growth over the next two years? Get that in your head because if, if you know, anybody's doing it right now, you can do it as well. Um, so just, uh, just keep that in, in mind when you are starting to uh, think about this. And if you have hesitation, just think why not? Because you can absolutely do it. All right. So as I said, you know, we're integrated with North America, Europe, India and Australia in terms of data, uh, a verified partner with Amazon. So, you know, over the years, we see the data, we see what people are typing into Amazon. We see what kind of products are being sold. We understand what is working, what isn't working. And I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you uh, today. This is a graph here just to quickly show you Amazon North America sales starting back in 2003. I've got an arrow there, which is 2016. 
but that's the actual growth. I mean, they're, you know, they're at about $64 billion uh, a year right now in terms of uh, sales. Uh, and that's North America. Um, but that, that, that kind of exponential growth that you're seeing there, it's a blueprint that, that Amazon is very good at. They're going to marketplaces. They absolutely crush competition with their distribution networks, with Amazon Prime. They know how to um, you know, set up their supply chains uh, and distribution networks and really grow an amazing platform. And they're doing the same thing time and time again in other markets. Amazon Australia is probably their poster child right now. It's the fastest growing Amazon marketplace in the world. Amazon India, they want 10 million sellers on that platform by 2025. So they're investing in that. So there's all of these new markets that are coming in where Amazon knows exactly how to do it, but it's at that beginning point, like that 2016 points of their exponential growth, their natural growth. So if you can get in now, just imagine in a couple of years what that growth of your revenue is going to be um, for some of those marketplaces. So that's what I want you to think about is outside of North America, what markets could I get into? And by the way, it's very easy to, to set up an account in those marketplaces, use a, use a cloud banking account. It's easier now than ever to get into some of those marketplaces. India, a little bit harder. You have to have a business license, but it absolutely can be done. Okay, so this is another slide. Total visits in November 2020. This is the latest one from Marketplace Pulse. You can see Amazon.com, you know, the amount of uh, website visits they got was over 3 billion uh, visits in that month. But then look at Japan, Germany, UK. Those are all viable marketplaces. They're around that 600 million, 350 million in India, uh, all the way down even to Amazon Australia, which is a million visits a month. They're still a viable marketplace. But you can see from the pandemic and from the changes in, in the e-commerce world, these are becoming substantial markets where you can absolutely make uh, a great business and grow it over time. So at a high level, USA is a very seasoned marketplace. It's competitive. There's big sellers. There's big brands. There's a lot of money being spent in uh, a pay-per-click. Um, so when you look for a product, if you're just launching, you have to be very micro niche, a very specific target audience for a very specific product. And if you can use data to pull back those onion layers and find those specific products, you can do absolutely well. And you can get into niches where some of the big brands aren't really playing and you can scale their business over time. So you have to be very, very specific when you're going onto Amazon uh, uh, USA. Other marketplaces like Australia, India, you know, the ones that I mentioned, France, Italy, Spain, they are viable markets now. You can absolutely create a massive business there. Um, they have traffic volume. There's much more opportunity. You can get in. You can beat the competition. There's less competition. You don't have to have as much capital. And it's an investment in the future of how this is going to grow. It's more of a macro niche. Again, like those bigger product categories like gaming chairs, those are still viable on uh, some of these marketplaces. Here's an example, just to give you a quick example. This is a, a USA product right now, uh, the, the KME six-layer car, car waterproof cover, right? This does about 500000 a month, uh, there and there about uh, uh, a month for, for this type of product, right? And, and this same product on Amazon Australia right now, they're on FBA. They're one of the only FBAs on page one. They're doing about $2,500 a month on Amazon Australia. Now... Just by being FBA, you can literally get onto page one right now. You'll see there's a lot of retail arbitrage happening there. There's a lot of wholesale uh, products, but Amazon wants to support FBA. So if you're FBA, you're going to be on page one. You're going to start off in this kind of range. And over the next few years, this is going to grow to at least 50, 60,000 a month on Amazon Australia. It's a smaller marketplace, but the exponential growth is going to happen just from the natural growth. If you get in now, it's like staking your claim. You don't want to miss that opportunity. I'm more excited about Amazon Australia than I have been with other marketplaces for a long time, because if you get in right now, you can do absolutely uh, amazing. Okay, so, you know, those those are the kind of opportunities. So at a high level, if you're looking at these different marketplaces, rem remember the USA, a lot of competition, high demand, micro, micro niches, you've got to go really specific. Think about your target audience who wants a specific, you know, descriptive product. That's the one you want to serve them. Visual differentiation is absolutely important. It is in most markets, but for sure in the US. UK and Europe, it's more moderate competition, medium niches. Uh, consider the cultural differences in the different marketplaces, listing optimization, you know, cultural nuances. You have to look at that a little bit more price sensitive than the USA. Australia, macro niches, you know, those big categories. You want to get in the pet category, you know, the, the camping category, you know, some of these much bigger categories. You can absolutely still get in there. It's emerging low competition, long term growth. You're investing now for the growth over the next two, three years, which is going to be exponential. And then India is you know more of a utilitarian product focus right now so you know um you know the much more kind of specific um day-to-day -day, uh, consumer goods that you want to get that's on the on the india marketplace they're value driven uh it's much more functional right now than aesthetics so it's not as brand focused but there's an opportunity for non-utilitarian medium uh you know niche growth there's an opportunity around those brands 
uh, to grow over the next few years. So if you can get in with a few brands now, you're going to see um, the, the marketplace is already starting to switch. Consumers are buying products that are not just utilitarian on India. So that's going to grow over time for sure. So that at a high level is how you look at different mar uh, niches on the different marketplaces, depending on where you want to sell. Um, all right. So uh, I want to jump into some examples right now and just show you uh, how to do this. The first thing I just want to say to you is how do you validate a product idea? This is important. It's not just a sales estimate, right? That's a very important point. Uh, and, and what we've done over time is, is, is understand what are the business questions that we have to answer with data in order to validate a product niche. And we came up with this niche score and it's based on, the, and this is the fundamental to, to any um, product validation, no matter, no matter what you're doing on Amazon. It's the balance between obviously demand. So you want some demand, but not, but not too much, right? Otherwise, you're, you're obviously your investment is going to go up. Uh, your competition opportunity, you want some competition, but not too much competition. So what does your competition opportunity look like? The capital, this is important, right? How much investment, how much capital you, do you have to invest in your business? That's critical. And then obviously the profit opportunity, how much profit will you make uh, in the net margin? You don't want to sell something for $2 um, if, your, if your profit is 10 cents, right? You want to be selling something at a, at a right price so you can make enough margin to truly scale your business. It's really important. And obviously the, four, the, the, the fifth one, is differentiation it's not something that you can necessarily use data to to differentiate but you can get insights into how to differentiate using data we have a tool called love hate which you can which you can use for insights but that is such an important piece it's almost 50 percent of the equation even if you get it all right with the top four if you don't differentiate in the right way uh, your chance of being successful is much lower so make sure you understand and do your research around your customer uh, understand their needs their wants their emotional connections and how to connect with them better with your product and your brand and you'll do absolutely well on Amazon. So don't forget that piece. Time and time, I, I hear people who haven't done well on Amazon is because they've skipped the product research phase of really trying to connect and understand their customers. So get that right. Make sure you do the research up front. Um, and there's many ways that you can do that. So uh, I really implore you to make sure you do do the differentiation. Okay, so what I'm going to show you right now is just one, it's kind of a secret method that you can use keyword data um, to find product ideas. And I'm going to show you a quick example of how we do that. Now, you know, this is obviously on Zongu. You can use any tool. The, the fundamental thinking is the same. Um, but, you know, obviously the way that we pull data is, is kind of interesting. So this is a tool I'm going to show you. It's called Keywords on Fire. Uh, it is a, 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 a basically a keyword tool that gets all the keywords from what people are actually typing into Amazon, no matter what marketplace you're in. Uh, and you can use it for your listing optimization, for your, your PPC campaigns, uh, you know, all of those kind of aspects of your business. So, so big sellers use this kind of tool. Um, and to understand what your competitors are, are ranking for and how you can beat them, right? That, that's what this tool does. But you can actually use it for research. If you put in a more generic keyword and then use so, certain filters to really get in at the data. So I love this way of doing it. It takes a few seconds. Um, but for example, I'm going to show you quickly right now. This The, the keyword I just put in for the US market was shelf, right? A basic shelf. Uh, and that's a, that's obviously a one keyword. But it, as this, this keyword generate, generates keywords, and if you can filter down, you might find some of those longer tail descriptive keywords that are less competitive, have lower ratings that might be an interesting one to get in. And I'm just going to show you exactly how I did it right now. So let me jump over and show you inside of Zongu. Just give you one second. Uh, all right. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Um, this is the Keywords on Fire uh, tool inside of uh, Zongu. You can see the word shelf right here, right? So I just did a run on shelf. It's pulled in, you know, uh, you know, a bunch of unique keywords. The total revenue for this category is around 104 million. Lots of search volume. Uh, and below that, we have all of the results, right? So shelf is obviously, you know, big keyword. The dollars from that keyword for the top 25 sellers is around $2 million a month. We've got search volume over here. Those are the two that I'm going to look at right now. And then obviously ratings. How many ratings? Like 6,000 ratings on the word shelf, right? So very, very highly competitive. And then also price, right? So you want to have make sure you have the right kind of price. So what I'm going to do right now is just go in and, and filter. I'm just going to go here. I'm just going to go, hey, give me all of the um, keywords with a search volume of greater than or equal to a thousand. Typically on the US, if you have more than a thousand search volume, that's that's something that's viable, right? You've got enough there that you can make a business. So I'm just saying, give me everything more than than a thousand, and then I'm going to add another multiple uh, uh, filter here. I'm going to say, give me um, the ratings uh, less than or equal to a thousand. So I want lower ratings because if I have lower ratings, there's less competition, right? It's, it's kind of an indication of how competitive the niche is. If there's a lot of uh, ratings or reviews, it means that they're very seasoned. They've been around for a long time. So let's kind of find more of those, those smaller niches. And then maybe I'm just going to go here and say, uh, give me, um, you know, maybe give me the price of 
greater than or equal to 30 bucks, right? Because we, we want a baseline of like, say, $30 because we know we can make some good net margin on that. So now you can see I've filtered down to 31 keywords. And what I'm going to do here is maybe sort by ratings. So I'm just going to go give me those keywords with the lowest amount of ratings because that means, you know, there's still some really good, if you get my thinking here, it's got good search volume, you know, a decent price. But lower ratings, so it's not as competitive. So what opportunities can I see in here? Now, obviously, it says, you know, PlayStation 5, Wallmount, those are obviously just coming out. Corner Bookcase is really interesting to me, right? $343,000 from that keyword with only 282 ratings. Remember, some of those were like 6,000 ratings. So, you know, that's a really interesting opportunity. Um, origami Shelf, you know, maybe maybe something there. Rustic Bookcase, 149,000 uh, and only 540 reviews. So I could just, you know, literally go here and just click on this and it will open up amazon on that page you can look at it you can bring up our chrome extension and you can um, look at some opportunities so just you know then you can go down industrial foot uh, bookcase corner bookshelf uh, garage heavy duty shelving there's so many ideas in here you can just go down and down and down and just look at all these ideas rustic ladder shelf you know there's, there's a bunch in there so when i looked at this i was like hey this whole corner shelf looks pretty good and the rustic so why don't i just put those together so i just put that together brought up amazon here you can see rustic corner bookcase right this could be interesting. Obviously, it can flat pack. Uh, you know, it might not be too much uh, you know, assembly there. You've got a decent price for sure. Uh, and you can absolutely differentiate it. Just think about the market. You, It's rustic, so you know you have a key target audience, but you can differentiate it in, in absolutely a, a cool way. Um, and then if I just bring this up and look at it right on the Chrome extension, let's let that load for a second. Uh, I think I have some other examples here. I have, um, uh, you know, I put in a towel rack shelf. I brought that one up. You can see the score here. You know, uh, you can see the average rating is 30,000 30, a month. Um, and this is this is obviously the rustic bookshelf. But you can see some of the products down here, they're doing revenue, uh, 280,000, you know, 29,000, 30,000. So this is a decent product that you can get in on now on Amazon uh, USA and then, uh, and then you know, um, let that scale over time. So this is the kind of example of what I would look for on Amazon USA, um, you know, uh, very quickly just using the keywords on fire tools. So... Uh, here's another one, origami corner shelf, right? Look at some of these cool shapes and examples, right? This is this is about a ten thousand dollar budget, you know, average uh, monthly sales, average price of six thousand. So you know, there's still these like micro niches that you can get in and absolutely scale over time. So that's how I use this tool uh, to get in uh, and use, uh, you know, to get in and, and find ideas. So that's one example. Here was on fire. Uh, I'm going to show you another one here which is actually um, our niche finder tool, right? Which is, this is a totally different way of finding products. You can go in and actually set, you know, your niche score. You can set the search volume. Let's say, you know, 750 average ratings. You can do similar to what you're doing in Keywords on Fire, but do it within the niche finder. I'm going to show you this live and I'm going to do it just for the USA market because it's obviously slightly different. So let me jump over here and show you, right? This is our niche finder tool. Uh, I've gone in here and, and selected a few categories, right? Automotive, sports, DIY, garden and outdoors. So I've set those. And I've selected the marketplace I want, which is the uh, United Kingdom. So we're going to look at the United Kingdom in advanced mode. And then the key things that I've done here is set a baseline for my search volume. Remember, I did 1,000 on the other one. Maybe here I'll do like 750. So a baseline of 750 search volume and above. Uh, I've added an average price of about 25 pounds as a minimum. And then I've added average ratings of about 1,500 on the high level just to see what, what happens. I said, hey, a maximum of 150 or 1,500 ratings. And then I've just adjusted the competition opportunity and the buy demand to the, the higher part. So there's a bunch of ways that you can go in and filter this. There's some saved filters in the side here, which you can do. But this is the theory of how you look for products, right? So you're looking for those ones that have decent demand with low ratings with a decent price point. And then I've just put in some include keywords because I, you know, I don't want to look at everything. I want to look at just camping. Let's just say. So I put in camping and I hit search. And these are the results that came back. You know, camping windbreak, uh, niche score of 71%. You can see here. Average revenue of about 8,000, right? So I can go down and just look at all these different products, flag poles for camping, uh, double burner camping stove, you know, electric. You know, all of these are good demand with low competition, right? So there's a whole bunch of ideas here that you can just literally jump into and look at camping chairs, double camping stove, uh, inflatable camping sofa, you know. So you can just roll over these, see the high-level metrics, see what you like, and then click on one that you like. I just clicked on this one, moon camping chair. It opens up if you just click on it, right? So I just clicked on it. It opens up, it shows you the products, it gives you the niche score. And then here you can see this is an average price of 57 pounds. Great. You know, average revenue of 12,000 pounds. Amazing. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, you could just jump in. Uh, you've got a, a decent launch budget of 9,000 pounds. This is a great product to get into on 
um, on, on the, U the UK market, right? So that's a good example. Then I just opened it up with a Chrome extension. I saw another one here, Dutch oven camping. You know, this could be an interesting product, right? You could just open this up and have a look. So this is a really easy way to just get in. You can load more. There's thousands and thousands of product ideas here. You can just get in and load using a niche finder. So there's two ways. One, which is a little bit more data specific, which is this one over here, the queue is on fire. You know, also you can look at all the competitors. How do they rank for everything? Every single one of those top 25 competitors, much more data specific. You can download, look at the CSV. A lot of, lot, a lot of more um, senior sellers will use this and download the CSV and, and manipulate the data even further. Or you can go over and use that, like a niche finder and then, uh, and then bring up some product ideas. For example, this, this, uh, this, these camping chairs, look how you can differentiate it. Think about how you could do this slightly different to anyone else. This is a great chair because it's one, one shape, but you could probably do some add-ons to really make it stand out. Great niche score, you know, 7,400 uh, launch budget on, in terms of the pounds uh, and then go for it. So that's uh, in a nutshell, the theory, search volume and ratings. How can you balance those two out? So get decent search volume, lower ratings, less competition, narrow down, find those descriptive longer tail keywords that really describe a product, get very micro niche on the, the USA, get a little bit more medium niche on the, the UK and other, other countries there. And then obviously macro when you go into Australia and you look at some of those other products as well. So I hope that helped just from a theoretical perspective and obviously showing you how the data looks. What I'm going to do is just jump over here and then uh, show you some more examples because I've I just pasted some examples on here that I picked out uh, for you guys today to show you how it looks in different marketplaces, right? So um, let's just jump through this. Those were the examples that I showed you on the niche finder. So uh, let's just jump through this. This is just, a, you can take a screenshot of this. This is just literally uh, some of the ways that I use the niche finder, the Chrome extension, the keywords on fire. On the Chrome extension, don't remember the, the, don't forget the one, two, and three. It's a yellow one, two, and three on the Chrome extension that shows you the products that are getting the most clicks and conversions uh, from brand analytics. So that's really interesting because it's not just the highest sales, it's which ones are getting the most clicks and conversions. Is it price? Is it differentiation? How do they look? So uh, here's some examples, right? So this is Australia, right? Remember macro niche. Uh, we're going to jump over here. Um, this is a baby bed rail. Now this does a fantastic in the USA. If you look at this category, you know, they're, they're doing, you can see here, they're doing about 350,000 a month, right? But over here in, in Australia, they're, they're only just doing about 4,000 a month. That's very early on, but this is absolutely as, as the customers start to use Amazon for more consumer uh, focused products, like baby products. Um, this is going to explode as a category you can get in right now. 4,000 a month. Just imagine a launch budget of 3,000 Aussie, Aussie dollars. You can get in FBA. You'll be on page one. Amazon's going to support you. You're going to grow. So this is a great example of what can work in Australia. This is great as well. Jumpstart. I mean, this product is huge. It's already doing, uh, you know, monthly revenue of about 25,000. But there's a product on here, which is doing about 250,000 uh, Aussie dollars. It's a jumpstarter. You can get these products, electric products from, from uh, China, et cetera, sell them there. Uh, and you can do really well with this product. So it shows you the potential of if you find the right products on that macro niche scale, this is already doing a high number. And look at it on the US, it's doing about a million dollars a month. There's a bunch of them doing about a million dollars a month. So this is a great idea. Um, this is India. Remember, it's a little bit more utilitarian. This is a baby uh, walker for babies. Um, this is doing, uh, you know, it's just starting, but this does about 116,000 on the, on the USA market. So just think of the potential growth. I think if I remember the stat correctly, uh, re uh, uh, e-commerce retail in, in the U S is around, uh, 14%, but on, uh, on, on the, on India, it's around 7%, right? So there's a massive difference in terms of how much e-commerce business is going there versus the whole of retail. So if you can get in really early not right now, it's just going to explode on Amazon India. So it's a really exciting marketplace. There's another one, badminton set. Um, you know, again, this is in uh, rupees, but, uh, there's some numbers there that you can do. It's probably about 5,000 a month that you can do with something like a badminton set. So super interesting. Remember micro niche for the USA. I love this one example just to really explain a comic book organizer, right? This is obviously a very specific customer uh, who wants to pack their comic books away. You can imagine what kind of target audience that is. It's a very tiny audience, but you can, they, they really care about their product in terms of looking after their comic books. This is just a box with a great print on the outside. And this is doing, you know, this category is doing an average revenue of about about 19,000 a month on, on average. So, you know, a really interesting product that you can get in on golf net indoor. This is really interesting. Low ratings. You can get in, you can sell this product. This does about 180,000 in the US. So it's a bit bigger truck bed organizer. I love this product as well. Just think about all the different avatars or different types of people that use trucks. 
you know, from from the, the mom, the soccer mom to the dad to, you know, the, the contractor. And how could you have some kind of truck bed organizer that caters to those different markets? You know, this is a super niche category. You can really dive in, not just truck bed organizer, but truck bed organizer for contractors or whatever. This is a really cool uh, example. Um, all right. Uh, that's it. I've got an exclusive offer. I can jump into that as well. If you want Augustus or if you have questions, uh, we can go over it as well. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, you know that's, that, that's essentially it. So we have two great offers for you guys. We can jump in and explain that if you like. Yes. So let's talk about the offers. Talking about the offers. So everyone who is following the Clickbox videos where you see Clickbox branding, we are running a campaign where we are offering Clickbox package uh where we collected exclusive deals and negotiated deals with uh, over 20 uh, amazon tools and softwares and services and one of them is uh zonguru so could you uh, give us a little bit an overview oh you have a slide okay yeah Perfect. i got a slide I'll, i can explain it yeah so we've, we've got two offers one is for anybody you can go to the the clickbox offer which is zonguru.link forward slash clickbox offer or if you want to get an additional $250 in free analysis. So, you know, if you sell on Amazon, you have a listing or if you have a potential listing that you're building um, and you want to look at all the keywords uh, specifically, you know, how to how to place the keywords in your listing. Where do your competitors rank? What is a subset of, of longer tail keywords that you can own that your competitors can't um, and how to build that listing using, um, you know, the keywords of fire as well as um, you know, our listing optimization tool, which will guarantee you have the number one optimized listing versus your top eight competitors. We compare it against all the competitors. Uh, you can do that obviously in the software, but if you want one of our specialists, we have sellers on the team to actually do that analysis for you. They'll just literally take your ASIN. They'll do the analysis and send it back to you and say, Hey, this is how you can improve it. We're giving that away free worth $250 as part of the, the, the click box, um, special, uh, offer, which is zongu.link forward slash click box consult. So if you put that in, I think I have that right. Uh, we're capping that at 150 customers, but you can get in and get that offer. So those are the two um, differences. Now I'm going to explain the, the whole package of what you get in there, but just know that the two differences, you get that additional $250 with, um, you know, with with uh, with a, the Clickbox offer um, that Augustus is, is, is pushing. So um, what we've done uh, for this, uh, for anybody here is to basically give you our seller plan at the researcher rate. So no matter if you're selling on Amazon or not, you can actually get this, this bundled uh, set of software, but what all the sellers use, you'll get it at the researcher rate. So we're giving it a, a pretty massive discount. Um, and, uh, and we're also giving you um, two challenges. One is a research researcher challenge, which is how do you find the right product? We have um, a trainer giving you uh, uh, daily access to certain videos that will help you to find the right product to sell on a marketplace. And you're guaranteed at the end of that to have a few products and a supplier using our easy source tool um, you, you know, actually having a supplier that can actually, um, you can launch a product. So you can get that one or you can get the, the, the rapid ranking challenge, which is again, that way of how do you optimize your listing so you can get the best ranking. So we will give you the choice of either of those in this absolutely free. We give you a product tracker sheet so you can track your products. It, it changes colors depending on if it's a good idea or not. So it's a really step-by-step -step process just to take away all of that anxiety around choosing a product and just walk you through a process. So you'll get that free. We'll give you an FBA calculator. We have one for every single marketplace. Um, you know, that's really critical because you have to know your net margin. What are all the Amazon fees? And it's different for the Europe versus uh, .com versus Australia versus India. So depending on which marketplace, we'll give you that. Uh, and then we're giving you a hot products ebook, which you can also get uh, including that value. And I think it totals, uh, so, and, and an extended free trial. So 14 days, absolutely free. You can get and use that. You're signing up for an annual offer. It's about $24 a month. You save about $468. And if you take the click box, uh, consult offer, you're getting an additional $250 analysis. So, um, yeah, the, the, the best offer we can absolutely put forward. Um, we haven't done uh, this kind of thing where we give you our researcher plan, uh, our seller plan at the researcher plan uh, cost. So you're getting a, a massive saving there right off the bat, plus all these additional things. We'll give you everything. We have a really strong customer uh, service team. We have a whole bunch of sellers. Yeah, there's two Kimberleys on there that both have uh, multiple brands and they've also sold the Amazon businesses as well. They are on there to help you. Um, you know, we can, we'll give you everything you need to basically help you either scale or obviously find the right products and, and get going. So, uh, I hope, I hope you, you, uh, I hope you get value out of that. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to show the actual page of uh, Clickbox. So yeah, basically, uh, whenever you come to the here, Clickbox, yeah. yeah. When people come to the Clickbox page, uh, 
they will see you off also explained here on that page and at yes. the moment we're running uh, lower price later it will increase and also this is very time limited package uh, in a few weeks uh, it will expire and will not be possible to purchase so again if someone wants to take advantage to uh, have some boost in the amazon business i think it's an amazing package all right so now let's we've go we've never and the... just, just another note there we, we've actually never um given away uh, that listing analysis uh with 250 dollars uh, we have a full team that literally does that for for our biggest enterprise level sellers um and we're giving you that uh, away free so literally um there's no difference just sign up for that click box i mean there's a whole bunch of other uh offers in there as well that you can take advantage of but uh, if you sign up for the click box jump in subscribe you have 14 days free get that listing analysis done uh you won't regret it you'll get that in the email follow-up so as you sign up uh for that deal in the email you get the link and say hey put in your asin uh schedule a session with the listing uh, experts and they'll do that for you so a uh, huge offer uh, uh augustus had to had to beat that out of me to give it to you guys but uh you know i want to support you guys and, and give you something All cool. right. so uh it's there uh, so let's have a 20 second break with, uh, again, as I said before, Zonguru is sponsoring uh, this video and uh, so that John can have a glass of water before the Q&A session. Thank you, John, so much. You're always providing a lot of value for the viewers, which I really like myself. So now let's go through some questions we have received. So first one, when doing competitive research, what are the main red flags that indicate the product idea is a bad one? Yeah, good question. I think I think the, the number one is is you can get, you know, with that, that niche rater, you can get all of the right metrics, right? So good demand, competition opportunity, profitability, et cetera. But when you load it up onto amazon.com, you have to have a little bit of, of, of learning around how to think about differentiating that product, right? And I think most of the people who, who don't do well on Amazon is they haven't figured out how to differentiate the product because um, that's what it's about, right? If you can get the click, you can get better conversion. Amazon is going to support you um, and send you more um, traffic because they're going to make more money off of, off of you, right? So um, I think num number one is if you're looking at something and they all look the same or if you're trying to differentiate it by color, you're not going to win. So, so, so really think through how you can differentiate the product. That that's number one. I would say um, number two is obviously um, if if the competition opportunity is is literally zero. If there's if there's no no ability to compete um, versus the competition, they seasoned. They've been around for a long time. They have thousands and thousands of ratings. There's no ways you're going to get to page one. You need to be a lot more specific. You know, um, maybe take that category and and type in a few more descriptive keywords. Get micro micro niche on that category um you know for example camping water bottle that's a massive niche with a lot of ratings very very high competition but if you type in um you know uh, white camping bottle for five year olds and just making that up you know that might be a much more specific niche where there's not as much competition so get a lot a lot more specific um and get out of that high high level um uh competition uh that's probably the biggest flag is probably not differentiating and going to something that is way too competitive and you can't compete especially in the usa because you know those big competitive niches these brands have so much cash flow that they're investing into into ppc and uh and you just can't compete you know you look at amazon's page now there's so many it's pay for play right you've got to have the ability to compete on ppc um and if they're dominating that you, you want to have a good chance Okay, very good. Actually, have, we have one question regarding niches and keywords as well. So when launching a new product, should we include only niche keywords and less competitive keywords to the listing copy? Or should we add broader keywords from the start as well? Really good question. Yeah, so um, the, the answer is both, actually. Um, you know, obviously, when, when, when we do a listing optimization, we, we follow this method called the halo effect. And what that means is, uh, make sure you, you run a, a keywords on fire session. You, you take the, the top main keywords for your listing with the biggest traffic, right? Um, that are obviously relevant for your product and make sure your listing has that from the title to the bullets, et cetera. So that's, that's step one. So you've got to have, you've got to try and maximize your potential. So put in the, the, the broader, uh, keywords, but then do what I did and, and filter down using search volume ratings, 
maybe longer, you, you can use any of those columns there, you know, longer descriptive words and find uh, some of the, like a pocket of keywords that are very relevant for your business, for your product that are more descriptive. And then when you scroll to the right, you see every single competitor and where they rank for that and pick out some of those keywords that your competitors aren't really ranking for in the top 25 positions that are relevant for your product. And then make sure you get those those keywords, put them into your listing so that they're in there, right? And that you also run a, a, a separate PPC campaign with those longer tail descriptive words that, that, are, that are quality scored against your listing. So if you can get that matched right, uh, what happens is yeah, the halo effect starts to happen. When you launch, you will start converting at a high conversion rate for some of those descriptive keywords that you have in PPC that match your listing. So there's relevancy. The algorithm will, will recognize that and then it'll say, hey, th this is a great product that's converting well. And I'll start to send you more traffic for some of those broader keywords. And you can start to compete against some of those bigger sellers for some of those much bigger, broader terms. And you can scale the business. So um, it's a really good question. You should absolutely uh, put both in there, but make sure that you, you pull out those longer tail descriptive keywords and run some PPC towards that so that you can beat your competition, get high conversion rates and scale with the algorithm. Okay, perfect. Very good answer. Thanks for going so much into the details because it really helps uh, sellers a lot. So we have one question regarding keywords. So based on what criteria should sellers pick out, uh, pick out the most important keywords for their product uh, for which they should aim to rank the highest for? Another good question. Jeez, good audience here. Um, you know, so I, I think it's I think the, the it's kind of what I said before, which is you need to make sure there's some good search volume, right? So if it's the US, it's anything above a thousand. Maybe in Europe, it's at like seven fifty. So there has to be some decent search volume, even even some low search volume because it's in your listing, right? You're not finding a product, so so get those keywords in there, and then and then you know make sure it's really relevant for your product. But then look at your top three or four competitors. Because you get a list of all 25, you get up to 25 competitors you can look at. But look at your top ones on, on the right hand side. I'd have to show you that. Maybe I can show you that in a second. And then and then see where they don't rank. Uh, and then those are the ones that, you know, for example, if you're going for white camping bottle versus uh, white camping bottle for men, right? They might have very similar search volume, but the competitors haven't really picked out that longer tail white camping bottle for men descriptive word. That's the one that you really want to target over the other one because you can beat your competitors and you can get in there. Um, I can just show you just uh, just so it makes sense. Let me just, uh, can I share my screen real quick? Just like it's playing, it's right here, right? So if I go here, uh, I'm just going to sort by ZG score. So this is this is kind of our, our highest metrics. Uh, sorry, I've got to actually, well, let me, let me just get rid of these. One second. Uh, so I'm just showing all keywords now, right? So, so you can see like, if I scroll down here, let's say I, I was selling something with uh, uh, metal, metal storage shelf, right? Um, you know, if I scroll to the right, like it's good, it's got good search volume over two thousand dollars from keyword is high. Ratings are, are a little bit too high, so I probably wouldn't pick this. But let's say if I picked it, I could scroll over here and say, "Hey, out of those 20, 25 competitors, who ranks really high? He's in position two, position one. These guys don't rank. You know, these are in actually bad positions. They're green." So this is a deep, if this was a keyword, I would probably pick this one because, you know, it's not really ranking for the competitors, right? So that could be a really good one to pick over some of the other ones. So that's, that's kind of how, uh, when I'm really defining what is my main buyer keyword and which one do I really want to target in my launch campaigns, I can go there and pick out five or six that really fit my product, but my competition hasn't owned yet. And that's how I can really win. Okay, perfect. So let me see, we have more questions. So here is another one. How to calculate the necessary launching budget for a product idea based on the product research data? Yeah, uh, good question. So uh, how we calculate it is we take the velocity of page one, because at the end of the day, if you're selling a product, you want to you want to be on page one, right? So there's 25 to 60 listings on page one, depending on the category. So we look at the average velocity of sales. How many sales do they do on a daily, monthly basis? And then what we do is we say, um, how much stock do we need to buy to be able to sell at the velocity of page one that will last us for two to three months, right? Um, and then and then we look at the cost of goods, which is usually you know, 20 to 30%. We kind of figure out what that cost is and that's the launch budget. So it's a guideline for sure, but for example, um, you know, we, we like to look at three months of stock. Some people might only want to get one month of stock if they're starting to test it. But honestly, if you're going in on Amazon, you have to do your homework, find the right product ideas, be confident in the data. And there's a whole bunch of tools you can use to be ready, be confident you can launch it 
and make sure you buy enough stock so that you can stay in stock and order your next one before you run out. So that's the guideline of how we come up with the launch budget. So again, it's the velocity of page one, uh, you know, how much stock you need to be in stock for three months at the velocity of page one at the cost of goods for that for that uh, product. So that's the guideline. You can absolutely be fe flexible with that. Um, uh, mainly concentrate on the other two, which is obviously demand, competition, opportunity, and revenue potential. Those are your number three that you really look at. And then the guideline is obviously on the launch budget. Okay, very good. So we have a question regarding to the marketplaces you mentioned. So do any of uh, these mentioned marketplaces uh, need any kind of specific documentation for starting selling on, on Amazon? Uh, I remember you mentioned something about India that there is certain documentation needed. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100% up to speed on on uh, you know the the business aspects of actually the documentation. But I do know in India um, you do need to have a business license in India, um, and that's a process that you need to go through and you can open. But it's like any market, you can absolutely do it. Uh, Australia, uh, not as much. You can absolutely open a, a global account. You can start selling on that. You can use a cloud bank um, to connect to it. Yeah, th there's no problem there, um, as as I understand it. Obviously, Europe. Um, you know, has its own guidelines. So uh, th the point I was making there is, is you know, it's not really an excuse anymore to say, hey, I can't launch a, a product in any of these marketplaces because I don't live there. There's absolutely ways that you can create a business, you can open it, um, and you can connect with Amazon's marketplace and you can start selling there. That's that's open to everyone. Um, and it's easier now than it's ever been. You know, Amazon absolutely wants that. So um, just go through the processes, understand it, um, and, and, you know, if there is any documentation you need, well, there's a moat that you have over other competitors because it's harder to get into, right? So see that as an opportunity, not as a negative. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So Sheldon is asking, the last time I did product research was in 2019. What would you say uh, are the biggest changes since then? I'd say the number one biggest change is uh, PPC. You know, it's it's pay. You know, it's pay to play now, right? I mean, Amazon's obviously cottoned on to the idea that they can make a bunch of money on on their PPC. Um, I'm surprised they've taken this long to really cotton on to it. I, I was always scratching my head, like I'm like Google is Google is so far ahead of them, and they're a search engine. Why don't they just get onto that? And, and it'll be interesting to see over the next while if Amazon can get the balance right, because right now it's almost becoming a bad customer experience because you go onto your your main search and there's just ads everywhere, right? So um, the organic listings really have to stand out from a customer perspective as well. But I would say that's the biggest change. Um, you know, PPC can be expensive. You have to understand it. And when you launch, you have to have your, your, your strategy set up. You have to have your PPC set up and you need to launch and, and know what you're doing there and be careful you don't burn too much money. So it, it's a benefit, right? Because you can uh, get your relevant keywords and you can, and you can uh, get that in front of customers. But um, you, you don't want to, uh, that's the biggest change I would say. So that's number one. Uh, on, on dot com, I think it's just bigger brands. That's the other one. If you're in big categories, there's big brands. Everyone is on Amazon now because from the pandemic, everyone shifted e-commerce. So even brands staying away from it are now on there. So um, there's a lot of competition. There's big brands with big money, with big budgets on PPC. So again, you have to be very smart and clever about what categories you go after, uh, what niches, um, and look at those options. So that's the biggest change, I would say, between then and now. All right. Thank you very much. I think we have no questions. And uh, one more time, if you want to learn more about Zonguru, you will find all the relevant links below in the description. Also, Zonguru's special offer for the Glickbox promotion. And thank you very much, uh, John. And good luck in your business. Yeah, thank you, guys. And uh, just a just a, just a note to 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 you, uh, Augustus and Lizette. Thanks for putting this on. I think um, you've been very creative in putting this event together not only to have the most value in terms of speakers, but also um, such amazing offers, you know, and, and this is going to be uh, available to to a lot of people. So uh, thank you for putting it together. You guys are doing great work and uh, I appreciate it. And uh, I know you have a great audience. So uh, again, if you need any help, whether you're taking the offers or if you just need us to connect with you, we have a whole team. Just go to zonguru.com, look at our blog. You'll get a whole bunch of information or even contact our customer support. They're there to help you. So uh, good luck. And uh Remember, uh, it's 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 still the ability is there. It's one of the best opportunities we have in our lifetime to build an amazing business uh, that just makes money for you every single minute of the day. It's there for you. So jump in uh, and and get going because uh, you don't want to you don't want to wait. You know, three years after this presentation and say I wish I had taken action and, and gone for it because that opportunity is there and especially some of those emerging marketplaces. So go for it. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank See you. Guys. Bye. Bye. And now I would like to invite you to watch uh, 
the whole playlist of videos we did uh, record with Zonguru, where you will learn more about their features, their tools, and uh, more tips about how to do a product research and use Zonguru for your Amazon business.